I, 39-year-old male, recently discovered that my wife, 38-year-old female, of 14 years, together for 17 years, has been having an affair with her district manager at Aramark Refreshments for about two years now. Before I delve into the details, there's a backstory to this situation that I believe is important for you to understand fully in order to determine if her infidelity was justified or if I simply settled a debt I owed. In 2012, I accompanied my wife to the hospital for her tonsil removal surgery. As she couldn't take her belongings inside the surgery room, I was handed her phone, which was constantly buzzing with notifications. Curious about the frequent alerts, I checked her phone and discovered numerous inappropriate emails exchanged with another man from her workplace. At the time, she was engrossed in reading Fifty Shades of Grey and referred to this man as her Christian Grey, a term she had previously used for me. Feeling enraged, I demanded answers, but she was unable to communicate after the surgery. On the drive back home, I provided her with a pen and paper to respond to my questions, to which she wrote that it was nothing more than flirting. Frustrated and hurt, I immediately packed my belongings, including my two-year-old child, and left for a brief weekend getaway to Arizona with my support system, comprised of my best friend and his wife, to distance myself from her. Upon my return, she assured me that she had deleted her emails and promised it wouldn't happen again. However, over the subsequent years, I found it impossible to move past the betrayal and felt that seeking revenge was the only way to proceed. Feeling neglected as my wife often went out with her friends and partied, I sought solace in the attention given to me by a client. We began texting, and while my wife was occupied, I would discreetly leave my son with my mother and meet with this other woman. I engaged in an affair and eventually developed feelings for the other woman. About nine months into the affair, my partner informed me that she was pregnant. Upon hearing this news, I felt compelled to confess everything to my wife, even playing Usher's confession song to set the mood. Surprisingly, she took the news relatively well, mentioning that she had sensed something was amiss and believed that God had prepared her for this moment. I expressed my desire for a divorce and a fresh start with the other woman, but my wife suggested that we work things out through church attendance and therapy with our pastor. I couldn't refuse her offer, so I broke the news to my pregnant affair partner that we wouldn't be starting a new life together as she had hoped. Several months later, I discovered that my wife was also pregnant, only three months apart from the affair partner. Seeking to solidify her position over the other woman, my wife insisted that we have another child together. In December 2014, my family grew from one child to three in the blink of an eye, presenting new challenges and adjustments. Fast forward to the present, my wife and I have faced our fair share of obstacles, but I am genuinely pleased with how we are raising our beautiful children. I have made significant progress in rebuilding our relationship and have remained faithful and committed. However, recent revelations have shaken me to the core. I have learned that over the past two years, my wife has been engaging in an affair with her boss, attending happy hours, working overtime, and even spending holidays with him, all the while staying in hotel rooms together. This is how I discovered the truth. My wife went out for drinks after work, and when I asked her what time she planned to be home, she said 9 p.m. However, when 9 p.m. came and went without her return, I grew concerned. I tried calling her multiple times, but received no response. Eventually, I received a text message from her with a photo of her female co-worker, indicating that she was just having a few more drinks before leaving. I found it strange that she could text me but not answer my calls. Upon zooming in on the photo, I spotted a napkin on the table revealing their location. I drove 45 minutes from home to find her, and there she was, at the bar with her boss, his arms around her. When I approached them, they were both taken aback. My wife hastily said goodbye, but I questioned her about whether I had interrupted something. She burst it off, closed her tab, and left. I stayed with her boss, who was visibly intoxicated and began discussing personal matters, including his marriage. He even asked me if I had ever caught my wife cheating, to which I responded that I hadn't, but implied it wouldn't end well if I did. As he ordered another drink, I noticed my wife repeatedly calling him on his phone, which struck me as odd. When he abruptly left the bar, I headed home with a myriad of questions for my wife. Her explanation was that she should have informed me that her boss was also present. Unconvinced, I decided to check my phone records and was devastated to discover that she had been conversing with him Monday through Friday after work for 15 to 30 minutes at a time, spanning two years. 
Confronting her with this evidence, she claimed that they discussed work-related matters and reporting numbers after clocking out. However, considering she is not a salaried employee and logs her hours, this explanation seemed dubious from an HR perspective. Determined to uncover the truth, I recorded their conversations, and upon hearing them, my heart shattered into a million pieces. She had intimate conversations with her own cousin, expressing how much excitement her affair partner brought to her life. It wasn't just about the physical aspect, but also his humor and playful nature. She belittled me for believing her excuse about the end-of-day calls being genuine. She mentioned they needed to lay low for a while and expressed determination with the phrase, where there's a will, there's a way. Furthermore, there were exchanges between them professing their love and how they felt when together. It was undeniable evidence. Feeling furious and unsure of what to do, I contemplated reporting them to HR. However, considering my wife had recently received a promotion, I hesitated to expose her affair with her boss. Instead, I took matters into my own hands and reached out to his wife. With the help of a friend, I gathered information and contacted her on LinkedIn. We spoke over the phone, and I disclosed everything I knew, corroborating details and timelines. Despite our efforts, they initially denied everything, even when confronted with recordings of their conversations. Eventually, they confessed to their affair. Now faced with a difficult decision, I grappled with whether to stay for the sake of our children or leave now that my own misdeeds had been exposed. My wife pleads for reconciliation, but I've already moved out and take the kids to school every morning. She assures me it won't happen again, but how can I trust her after two years of betraying our marriage? She allowed him into both her heart and her bed. I wonder if this is my opportunity to start anew or if I should endure the challenges to ensure our children grow up in a stable family environment. Can our toxic marriage be salvaged or is it beyond repair? Additionally, I contemplate whether to take action against the district manager for his role in this betrayal. I recognize that two wrongs don't make a right and I'm seeking advice from anyone who has managed to maintain their family unity despite similar circumstances. Let's pause for a moment. Subscribe to the channel and write your opinion in the comments. Let's continue the story. Story 2. My partner Francesca, 33 female, and I, 34 male, have been together for a couple of years. We both use cannabis, but I limit myself to occasional sessions due to tolerance buildup from my teenage years. Francesca, however, enjoys drinking and does so every weekend. We recently attended my cousin's wedding, where Francesca persuaded me to swap my usual joint for a few rounds of drinks at the reception. I ended up getting more drunk than I ever have before, and to my shock, I stumbled upon Francesca doing cocaine with Sean, 31M, another cousin of mine with whom I'm not close. Sean views me as a weirdo due to my cannabis use, while I see him as an arrogant, spoiled bully. Finding them together like that felt like a betrayal, especially when Francesca brushed it off as her just having a good time. Despite our argument, we ended up in bed together. The next morning, I woke up to find her gone. Feeling heartbroken, I tried not to jump to conclusions. At the reception, I overheard some of Sean's friends joking about him shagging his cousin's girlfriend. I confronted them, demanded to know which rooms they were in, and insisted one of them come with me. The sound of sex was audible before we even reached the room. After repeated shouting and knocking, Sean opened the door to see me. He backed away, and I followed him into the room. Francesca, my Francesca, was in bed, looking shocked and asking what is it. Sean stayed silent. I could only stand there as she became hysterical, claiming it's not what it looks like. But it was exactly what it looked like. I left without saying a word. I'm feeling a mix of betrayal, anger, and confusion right now. I'm open to any advice, any words of wisdom, as I navigate through this. Francesca has been relentlessly trying to contact me. Calls, texts, even showing up at my apartment, she's desperate to explain, to justify what happened. But honestly, I've been too numb and too hurt to listen. Sean? Well, he's been disturbingly silent towards me. However, he's been more than vocal about the situation with the rest of our cousins. I discovered he's been bragging about what happened that night. I only learned about this when an uncle scolded him for his behavior. To say I'm disgusted would be an understatement. And the reaction from my other cousins? Well, it's been far from supportive. 
Many are content to laugh at my expense, and it feels like an additional betrayal. They've started calling me cuck, which is not only immature but also incredibly hurtful. I've decided I don't need that kind of negativity in my life right now. As for Francesca, we still haven't spoken. I'm not sure I'm ready to hear her side of things yet, but I know I will need to at some point. I need that closure to move forward. Right now, my focus is on myself. I'm trying to regain a sense of normalcy, taking one day at a time. I'm reconnecting with old hobbies, trying to find joy in the little things again. I know there's a long road ahead. Healing isn't linear, and I expect there will be good days and bad days. But I'm taking the first steps, and that's what matters. I'll update again when there's more to share. Until then, thank you for your continued support. It means more than words can express. Today, my cousin Lucille called to apologize. She seemed genuinely remorseful, which was a change. She also informed me about a new lie Sean's been spreading, that Francesca and I had an open relationship and her sleeping with other men was part of our kink. According to him, I was just annoyed that he got involved. I can't say I'm surprised by Sean's behavior, but it's still disheartening. However, it's a clear reminder of why I've chosen to distance myself from that part of the family. I've arranged to attend therapy regularly, which I see as a lifeline to help me navigate this mess. I'm still not speaking with my other cousins. Their lack of empathy and respect has left a sour taste, and I'm not sure that will ever change. However, I did speak with Rona, Francesca's sister, when she came over to pick up her stuff. What she revealed shocked and disgusted me. Francesca has a history of infidelity, often with men who are involved in drug dealing to settle her debts. Learning this made me physically sick. Many of you were right. The cheating and the cocaine were not isolated incidents. How did I not notice any of the signs? I immediately called my doctor to get tested for STDs. The wait for the results has been one of the most stressful periods I've experienced. To say I'm devastated would be an understatement. I'm back at square one, reeling from the hurt and the humiliation. But I'm going to continue with my therapy and try to learn from this painful experience. Just a quick update to say I got my results back from the STD test. I'm clean. This is a massive weight lifted off my shoulders. Finally, I gathered the strength to speak to Francesca. I wanted to understand why she hadn't just told me about her cocaine use. I would have helped her, I would have gotten her off it and possibly into rehab. But her response was a punch to the gut. She admitted that she would have cheated regardless. She claimed our sex life was lacking, that it was far from exciting, barely even vanilla. She confessed that she'd been faking it the entire time to avoid hurting me. Now, she felt no need to hold back. Francesca even echoed my cousins, calling me a cuckold and cruelly predicting that my next girlfriend will cheat on me too. The truth bomb Francesca dropped on me left me in a pretty dark place. The only person I've had the energy to speak to in the last two days is my therapist, who has been a constant rock for me in this storm. In an attempt to make some positive changes, I've given up cannabis and started hitting the gym. It's been a good distraction, a way to vent my frustrations. Physically, I've yet to see some improvements, but that'll happen eventually over time. However, I have noticed women at the gym checking me out, which has been a small boost to my self-esteem. I also had an unexpected encounter with Max, the son of one of my older cousins. He shared that since the wedding, the kids in the family have been giving their parents hell, calling them out on their behavior. I guess all that free weed I used to share with them made an impression. It was a small consolation, but it gave me a moment of satisfaction. Despite all the challenges, I'm still standing, Reddit. I'm hurt, I'm healing, and I'm working on building a better version of myself. Thank you for being there during this tough journey. Your support truly means a lot. This will be my last update for a while. I'll update again when I'm in a better place. Ran into Sean, things escalated. I bumped into Sean at our local store. Maybe it was all the pent-up anger or the last vestiges of my heartbreak, but seeing him there, so smug and unbothered, immediately set me off. And when he started taunting me, I just snapped. I did something I never thought I'd do. I attacked Sean. It was a flurry of punches, rage, and adrenaline. 
I broke his nose and knocked out one of his teeth. I've never been a violent person, but in that moment, it felt like every punch was for every lie, every betrayal, and every heartache. His friends were present during the incident, but they chose not to intervene to help him. Instead, they watched the entire situation unfold. After it was over, rather than rushing to Sean's aid, they distanced themselves by raising their hands and shaking their heads, as if to convey, we're not associated with him. I'm concerned about potential legal consequences. Charges like aggravated assault and grievous bodily harm are serious. However, I haven't been arrested, and the police haven't reached out to me about it. Nevertheless, I'm maintaining a low profile, trying to comprehend what occurred and how I lost control in that moment. I'm continuing with my therapy sessions and workouts, aiming to redirect my anger and pain into more constructive outlets. While I'm not proud of my actions towards Sean, I recognize that I can't alter the past. Instead, I'm focusing on personal growth to prevent similar incidents in the future. Life has taken an unexpected turn, and I've found a new girlfriend who has brought light back into my world. After the chaos with Francesca and Sean, I decided to prioritize self-improvement. I immersed myself in therapy, intensified my gym routine, and began rebuilding my life. During one of my workouts, I crossed paths with Emily. Our conversation flowed naturally, revealing numerous shared interests. Our dates have been delightful, each one surpassing the previous. Emily is compassionate, empathetic, and genuinely interested in me. We've exchanged stories of heartbreak and recovery, strengthening our bond. Trust is evolving between us, offering a sense of rejuvenation. In fact, things have progressed so positively that Emily proposed the idea of us moving in together. It's a significant milestone, but it feels right. Our time together has demonstrated our compatibility and enjoyment of each other's company. Cohabitation would deepen our connection and lay the foundation for a shared life. I took some time to reflect on this decision. Moving in together signifies a substantial commitment, and I wanted to ensure it aligned with both our desires. After thoughtful consideration, I embraced the opportunity and accepted Emily's offer. I'm eager about this fresh chapter and the prospect of nurturing a loving and supportive home with her. This marks the stark contrast to the turbulent and painful experiences with Francesca and Sean. I've made considerable progress since then, and I'm appreciative of the chance to embark on a new journey with someone who genuinely values and respects me. Story 3 I've been feeling lost for about two weeks now since I discovered the truth. There had been suspicions brewing for a while, with plenty of red flags, although nothing concrete. When I finally confronted her, her reaction of irrational anger and denial only solidified my suspicions. I resorted to snooping through her phone and computer but found nothing incriminating. So, I decided to take things a step further and installed small cameras around the house before heading out to visit some friends over the weekend. I grew up in Norway near the Swedish border, where I met my wife when I was 20 and she was 21, already a mother to a three-year-old child. We hit it off, and for the past 11 years, I've been like a father to her son. Despite being married for six years, that detail seems insignificant now. To cut a long story short, I returned home early when I knew she wouldn't be there and watched the footage from the cameras. As expected, there she was engaging in inappropriate behavior with another man. I recognized him as a colleague named Theodore, whom we were friendly with, along with his wife. I used to think the phrase seeing red was just a figure of speech, but in that moment, I truly experienced it. I've never felt that level of anger before. Typically, I'm a very calm person who rarely gets upset. But in that instant, I completely lost control. I lashed out, hitting the walls and kicking the bedroom door so hard that it flew off its hinges and shattered the glass table in the living room. In the heat of the moment, I bit the inside of my cheek without even realizing it. And when I screamed, I ended up spraying blood across the wall and floor. At one point, I hit my head pretty hard, and that snapped me out of my rage. Surveying the chaos around me, I knew I had to leave immediately. If my wife had walked in at that moment, I'm certain I would be in jail either for domestic violence at best or for something far worse at worst. I hastily packed a suitcase with essentials and grabbed my laptop. My work involves simulation and modeling, and my custom computer is indispensable for my job. Without a word, I sent a copy of the video to Theodore's wife, simply stating, Your husband is cheating with my wife. 
I met my son just outside our apartment complex, gave him a hug, and explained that while I would always love him, his mother was cheating on me, so I had to leave. I regret burdening him with that information. It just slipped out in the heat of the moment. I headed for the border, hoping to visit my family in Norway, but COVID restrictions prevented me from crossing. Currently, I'm staying in a cheap Airbnb. I'm functioning, but I feel like a zombie. I haven't communicated with my wife. The only person I've responded to is my son. He's been asking questions, and I've been honest with him, admitting that I don't know what will happen next, except for the fact that there will be a divorce. I'm searching for a good lawyer while grappling with hundreds of messages from my wife and her family. I've ignored them all. Only my parents know about the situation on my side. I don't want to confide in my friends because they're also friends with my wife, so I don't have a solid support system at the moment. I'm afraid that if I speak to or see her again, I'll lose control and do something irreversible. At the same time, I don't want to lose contact with my son, but I'm at a loss on how to proceed. My rage is still boiling inside me, and I don't know how to move past it. I know I need to respond to my wife at some point, but I'm so angry that I doubt I can be rational. Writing this out hasn't helped much so far, but I wanted to try.